Okay. Second. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to the talk um, with Mr. Budger. This is going to be an incredible talk, and we thank you so much for yeah. um, coming today. So Dimitri Budker received his PhD in physics from UC Berkeley in 1993 and was a postdoctoral researcher at the university until his faculty appointment in 1995. Um, he is also born in the former USSR, and Budker was a student at the Nova Sibirsk State University um, from 1980 until 1985, when he received his equivalent to MS with um, honors from the Department of Physics. Furthermore, um, he then served as a junior researcher at the Institute of Nuclear Physics, where he conducted research on laser spectroscopy of atoms. Then, in 1994, Wedger received an American Physical Society Award for, outstanding, for an outstanding doctoral thesis um, research in atomic, molecular, and optical physics. He is a recipient of the NSF Career Award and a fellow of the American Physical Society and was a Miller professor in 2003 to 2004. So, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. What an introduction uh, and beautiful uh, pictures. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Hold on, let me make you host just, just a sec. Uh, there you go, you are now host. Oh, and if someone shows up in the waiting room, you might have to admit them <laughs> occasionally. Uh, well, depends on their behavior, but yes, I'll try. <laughs> and, um, uh, I uh, want to say that I, I do have a lot of slides, uh, but um, sometimes I, I go off this, the script. Um, um, mm -hmm. Okay, this is not what we want uh, here. We want this. Um, and uh, I have a small request for you. Um, uh, please interrupt me at any, at any moment. Uh, that would be much uh, better if we, if it's a if it's a dialogue rather than a monologue. Uh, and uh, I am really actually grateful uh, to you guys for inviting me. I'm 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 happy to talk to you. Um, uh, so um, I um, have been working at Berkeley as a as a, a, well first uh, first I was as you as you said a, a PhD student and a postdoc then then an assistant professor and so on and so on. And now I am a, a, what's called a professor of graduate school in the physics department at Berkeley. And several years ago, uh, I took an appointment um, in Germany at the Helmholtz uh, Institute uh, in Mainz where uh, um, I, I lead a section of the institute that is called uh, matter antimatter asymmetry actually. So if you, if you are in, into antimatter, then uh, um, I'm the director of antimatter. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, uh, sometimes people actually, I think um, uh, Anushka um, uh, asked me by email, uh, or, or, or maybe it was uh, uh, somebody else, I, I can't remember. Uh, what's the, the difference between uh, 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 Germany? Uh, and the United States. And you can see this is the picture of, of Mainz and this is a picture of Berkeley. And you see that the difference is like day and night, right? So um, what are we going to talk about today? That's the problem, you know, with the Zoom um, lectures and, uh, and, and discussions, you don't see people, uh, you don't hear people laughing. You can only guess that they, they are, and you need, um, that lecture need, needs always a good feedback, I think. Anyway, um, today uh, we'll talk a bit about symmetries of nature as advertised, and uh, we will talk about continuous symmetries, 
uh, and we are trying to see if they are broken, but so far they seem to be uh, pretty good symmetries, and I'll explain what this means, that they are continuous. And then we'll talk about discrete symmetries, and they are almost all broken, amazingly. And we will also discuss what it means. Then uh, I'm uh, going to talk about uh, the concept called parity, uh, which is a symmetry with respect to spatial inversion. And I will explain everything about that. And I'll talk a bit about history. Um, and um, uh, I will tell you about the experiments that we do in our lab. Uh, uh, these are tabletop experiments. Uh, and we use them, uh, we do them with atoms. And I will tell you about one uh, particular experiment using ytterbium atoms. And maybe I'll, I'll say a few words about parity violation in molecules if we have time, and then we'll wrap up at that. So um, to understand uh, what, uh, what parity is, and again, let me repeat, parity is a symmetry with respect to spatial inversion. I have to explain what spatial inversion uh, is, and uh, this is actually a, a fairly straightforward concept. So, so take um, a coordinate uh, frame, x, y, z, and they then take every one uh, of the uh, coordinates and invert it through the origin. So your x becomes minus x, y becomes minus y, um, and um, z becomes minus z, right? So you just basically take these vectors and <coughs> invert them like this. And this operation uh, uh, sometimes is uh, indicated as P. Okay, and that's what you get. Now, um, you see, to, to understand what this object is, we can rotate it a bit, um, actually around Y prime axis, uh, we can rotate it by 180 degrees, and then uh, we get this. So, so this and this is basically the same thing, but you rotate it. And now you, you can compare uh, this coordinate frame and this coordinate frame. And if you um, take a hand, for example, take a, a right hand or, or a left a right hand or a left hand, and, and you direct um, you direct you know uh, uh, your fingers along these respective axes, you see that this is uh, what we will call a right-handed coordinate frame, and this one is a left-handed coordinate frame, and there is no way on earth where you can rotate your right hand into left hand. That's why you have right gloves and, and left gloves. You know, they're, they're fundamentally different, okay? And um, <clears throat> uh, one thing uh, you can notice here that uh, in order to go from this picture to this picture, actually you don't need to do spatial inversion and rotation. You can, you can actually uh, just do reflection in the plane, uh, in the ZX plane. Right, so if you put a mirror and only reflect the y-axis, uh, the mirror takes your right hand uh, uh, into the left hand. So sometimes people call um, the separation of uh, the parity is, is a mirror symmetry. It's not exactly a mirror, you see, because you need to do a reflection and the rotation, but it, it's, it's the, the non-trivial operation here is the mirror reflection. Okay, so far so good. Are we good? Please, please, please stop me if I if I start uh, talking jargon or lose you because I don't want to lose you. I, I want. I mean, I'd rather say fewer things, but you, but 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 have you with me, you know, than than just uh, be there alone. Okay. Um, so now, interestingly, um, that that there are um, there's just a tiny bit of mathematics, but it's fun mathematics. Um, so if you talk about vectors, um, and the simplest uh, example is is your coordinate uh, axis. They are vectors. They are pointing somewhere. So there are normal uh, vectors, and uh, uh, these are such vectors um, uh, uh, that that actually change um, their sign if you, uh, if you do spatial inversion of the coordinates. So if I take, for instance, the R, the coordinate of a point, and I invert my um, uh, coordinate axis, I get minus R. 
And then there could be velocity or momentum and electric field, et cetera, et cetera. And these are normal vectors that flip, um, flip sign under spatial inversion. But there are interesting uh, objects that are called axial vector. And uh, I don't know uh, if you uh, uh, have studied this kind of um, um, vector product of vectors. Have you, are you familiar with the vector product? Uh, not really, okay. Anyway, so there are these other types uh, of, of quantities that are also uh, vector, but they are not really vectors because when you do spatial inversion, they don't change sign. And the reason for that is that they basically, they are product, uh, some kind of the uh, product of, uh, uh, of, of two things that change sign and then is minus times minus is plus. And then um, there are also uh, scalar quantities. If you remember, a scalar quantity is something that doesn't have uh, a direction, only the, the, the magnitude. So normally you have, um, uh, uh, you know, energy, for example, is a scalar. Um, so if you do spatial inversion, the energy shouldn't really care uh, and, and remain the same. But, but there are also pseudo scalar quantities. Uh, and these things flip, uh, flip sign, and um, they, they come about if you take uh, 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 two two vectors, and now you have a scalar product um, uh, of a of a vector and an axial vector that gives you a pseudo scale. Anyway, maybe this is not even um, uh, uh, so uh, uh, exciting, but this is closely related. These symmetries are are closely related to. Um, uh, to, to the concept of parity to which we are coming now. And, 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 and there's actually an interesting uh, story because um, uh, before 20th century, um, parity wa was not a thing, so to say. Um, uh, things were uh, quite uh, asymmetric. You know, there's always uh, some symmetry uh, uh, well, not always, often some symmetry. For instance, uh, uh, you know, if you look at me and, and you don't look at, at the details, you know, of, of, my, of my haircut or something, I'm pretty, pretty symmetric, right, with respect uh, uh, to, to the center. But if you dig deeper and you cut me in half, you find that the, the heart is on one side and there's no heart on the other side. Hopefully, I haven't looked, but I, I assume. Uh, so, um, so the symmetry was not really a very strict thing, but when people started doing um, uh, quantum mechanics, so to say, uh, uh, that started with atomic spectroscopy, they, they started to see um, uh, uh, certain uh, systematic uh, features there. Um, and in order to explain them, they introduced this, um, uh, concept uh, of, of, of parity. So there were two types, uh, two types of uh, 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 the, the quantum states of an atom, it, it states of uh, even parity that don't change um, uh, when, you, uh, when you do spatial inversion and, and the ones that are odd, that, that, that change sign. And that helped explain a lot of observation. And, and finally, it, it was put sort of on, on the mathematical uh, foundation by Eugene Wigner, an amazing uh, uh, physicist of Hungarian uh, origin that later worked in the United States. Uh, and he, had, he, he put it on a mathematical basis and this was uh, understood then. And, and then uh, 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 th this concept of, of symmetry became a sort of uh, a dogma. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very convenient uh, thing um, and uh, theoretical physicists use use it a lot. Uh, so if you, there is some symmetry uh, in um, uh, the, the starting problem, so for instance, you you want to find a, a, a motion of a, of a you know a planet around the star, and 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 the interaction of the planet and the star is is spherically symmetric. Okay, so this symmetry, uh, uh, this um, uh, symmetry of the problem immediately re reflects on the on, on on the symmetry of the solution and tells you a lot um, about uh, uh, how they, um, uh, the, the this planet uh, will be moving without any any calculations. So just just from symmetry, you can you can say a lot of things 
um, uh, about it. Okay, so for instance, that the motion will um, be in play. Professor yes. Butker, I think someone's in the waiting room. <laughs> Someone is in the waiting room. Uh, Maybe. View the waiting room. Thank you so much. Waiting room, admit. Admit. <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you. No, no, sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry, guys, uh, who are in the waiting room. Um, I'm supposed to watch out for you, and I got excited as usual. And uh, anyway, um, now you are here. Welcome. Um, and, and um, uh, then people said, well, okay, left hand, right hand, eh, the laws of physics shouldn't really depend uh, on, on, on left and right. There's probably left and right uh, uh, symmetry, uh, okay? And, and uh, we, we, we cannot do any experiment that will um, distinguish, you know, between laws in the real world or if, if I'm looking in the real world or in the mirror. And this became, very quickly, you know, over over uh, how many years, you know, the 30 or something, uh, 40 years, uh, something that uh, was not even a, a big deal and became really a dogma in, in physics. And, and this uh, persisted till the early 19, uh, uh, or mid 1950s. And then something happened. Uh, and I'll tell you in a, in a few uh, uh, minutes what, what happened, but now I, I'd like to, to step back um, and, and, and say a few more words about symmetries. You know, um, uh, when we talk about laws of physics, um, we um, believe, uh, and this is based on experiment that if I, if I, uh, I'm now in Europe, okay, and if I do a physics experiment, fundamental physics experiment here, uh, and you guys do it at Berkeley, we will, we should kind of get the same result, right? Uh, so, uh, so the laws are uh, the same. And, and uh, you can say that uh, there is a translation uh, invariance of the laws of physics. So it doesn't matter where uh, where you are uh, uh, doing the experiment. And uh, it turns out that if you have such a, such as uh, uh, any symmetry uh, leads to a conservation law. This is a very deep result. And actually uh, maybe I have a pic, I do have a picture of this uh, amazing uh, person. Um, her name is Amy Nuther and mathematicians uh, like to call her mathematician, but, uh, but she did great work that has an amazing impact on, on, on theoretical uh, physics. Uh, she was actually a professor um, uh, in, in, in Göttingen uh, here, a very famous uh, uh, professor. And, and, and then she was uh, uh, Jewish and, and, and in 1933, she, she was fired uh, uh, by the Nazis, you know, because there was a, a uh, 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 a law uh, in Germany uh, uh, banning Jews from um, uh, holding faculty positions. And then uh, 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 she came to the United States and became a, a professor in, in America until her death in uh, 1935. But she's, a, she's, a, she's an amazing uh, scientist. And she uh, uh, was formulated what uh, is known as a Noether, um, uh theorem that says that if you have a symmetry, then there is a corresponding conservation law. And I'm not going to uh, prove to you how this is. I'm just going to tell you what these are. So, so this translation symmetry um, leads to momentum conservation. Have you studied momentum conservation in physics classes? Yes, you must have. Okay, good. Um, then uh, there is invariance, uh, there is um, a symmetry, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, with respect to time. Okay, so if I do an experiment today, then I go to sleep eventually. Uh, just wait, yeah, well, I, got, I will wake up in the morning, I do the experiment, it better give me the same uh, result, okay? Um, uh, or at least fundamentally, uh, if, uh, if nothing has changed in the condition, it gives me the same result. And this leads to energy conservation. And if I rotate my uh, apparatus, uh, I also should get the same 
uh, results, and this leads to uh, angular momentum conservation. And we, we are trying, uh, uh, please trust me, we are trying very, very hard uh, to, to check these things to see if there's a problem. Uh, and we can't. So, so far, these are really good firm um, uh, symmetry, so to say, or conservation laws. Um, and then, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, wait a second. It, it's, it's, it's giving away um, my uh, punchline here. Um, uh, then uh, 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 there are discrete symmetries. So, so the spatial inversion operation that we talked about uh, which is, uh, like I said, equivalent to mirror reflection. Uh, it's not a continuous symmetry. See, if, if I want to go from one place to another, I can split it uh, into very small steps and sort of continuously move from one place to another. But if I'm doing mirror reflection, you cannot you know, split it into uh, 100 small reflections. You just, either you reflect or not, right? And the other symmetry is uh, uh, called charge conjugation when you take you know, all positive charges and you flip their signs into negative charges. It's called um, uh, charge conjugation, yeah. And um, uh, then you can also think of uh, the direction of time as a, as a kind of an axis and you can re reverse that or you can say you can run the movie backward. And uh, and in principle, these things should also lead to cons to cons uh, to lo these conservation laws: parity conservation, C invariance conservation, time reversal invariance. Then, then you can combine these things and do uh, do combinations of uh, of transformations. So you can do uh, uh, a mirror uh, reflection and charge conjugation together, and you can do mirror reflection, charge conjugation, and and send the time backward. So these are uh, discrete uh, symmetries. These are discrete symmetries. And the, and the amazing thing about these guys is that, in fact, uh, most of them are violated. And we know this experimentally. They're violated. They're not good symmetries. Um, the, this one. The CPT still holds, okay. And uh, but we, we're really trying to um, to to see <laughs> uh, uh, if there's a small violation, but so far it holds. But these other guys are all uh, violated. Then, by the way, I should mention, but I'm not going to go into this today, um, unless you ask me. Is that uh, um, in quantum mechanics there is. Uh, Ultimate equality, as I as I as I as I as I call it, um, you really have identical particles. Uh, you know, my friend is also a professor, also has a beard. We uh, we are kind of similar, but we are really not identical. If you dig deep, but if you take two protons or two electrons or two hydrogen atoms or two ytterbium atoms, they're exactly the same. They really fundamentally exactly the same. And uh, uh, this leads to some additional um, uh, um, uh, symmetries, uh, uh, conservation laws, uh, if, if you want, but we're not going to touch those. But an interesting thing, again, is that these discrete symmetries are, are, are violated. I want to tell you a little story. Um, but before I tell you the story, I just, again, want to emphasize that we, we question um, everything and uh, uh, do experiments at a better and better sensitivity level to check all these things. Um, and uh, there are ongoing experiments um, that test uh, all, all of these things. And in fact, uh, I'm even involved in most of them and even that one. So, so we are really putting everything on a, uh, on an experimental basis here. Here is a story. What does this picture uh, remind you of? What do you think this picture is? A mugshot. It's a mugshot, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Uh, this is one of the greatest theoretical physicists uh, uh, of uh, the 20th century, Lev Landau. He, used, uh, he lived in the, in the Soviet Union. 
Um, and you know, in the Soviet Union, why is it why is it a mugshot? Uh, so in the Soviet Union, um, uh, as you hopefully have learned when you learn history, uh, there was a, a period of big terror um, where lots of people were arrested, lots of people were shot uh, in 1930s. And um, uh, 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 the, the dictator of that time, Joseph Stalin, he, it was his uh, strategy, I guess, to, uh, to terrorize uh, uh, people by this uh, uh, spontaneous uh, uh, repression and arresting some re random people without reason. But, but, uh, but Lev Landau actually was arrested uh, for a reason because he he uh, spread a little leaflet that compared Stalin to, to, to uh, Hitler and, and Mussolini. And uh, for that, he was arrested. Uh, and uh, luckily to, for all of us, uh, he was only in jail for one year and wasn't actually executed, but survived. Anyway, uh, uh, I, I just found this, this mug shot. And, and uh, 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 since I mentioned Landau, I wanted to, to show you. This, but um, uh, the reason I'm showing you Landau is a, is another anecdote. Uh, so, so I mentioned to you that uh, uh, theoretical physicists before uh, the mid 1950s really, really uh, believed in the law of parity um, conservation, and uh, it was an incredible, incredible shock uh, for people when. Um, uh, when uh, uh, violation of parity was experimentally discovered, and I'll tell you on the next slide how this was done. Um, and um, and uh, uh, Landau um, was was thinking uh, about this, and and then he had a, a brilliant um, idea, um, uh, and the idea was uh, that actually um, the operation of um, Facial inversion is not really the proper operation. That, in order to 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 really reach the the correct symmetry, you need to uh, to uh, to do always charge conjugation together uh, 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 with um, together with uh, uh, spatial inversion, and then everything uh, would be all right. So he kind of re restored the symmetry, and and this was in 1956, uh, and uh, there is a story about him. That he was telling everybody that you know if a CP violation uh, will ever be discovered, I'm going to hang myself. And uh, uh, the thing is that C CP violation was discovered several years uh, later in 1964, but um, uh, okay, Landau couldn't fulfill his uh, his promise. Uh, because of something also very unfortunate, he was in a, one of the smartest people on earth. Was in a in a terrible car crash in 1963, and and um, basically lost a lot of his mental uh, capacity until uh, the rest of his life. For a couple of years, I think he he was basically in the hospital. So anyway, um, there's a, a bit of um, anecdotes around uh, uh, symmetries, but. Um, now I'd like to tell, talk, talk about Perry violation and and first of all uh, about the discovery of it. Um, you know, periodically in physics there are these periods where people uh, get this uh, silly idea that they that everything is understood. Okay, that only the, the details left to uh, kind of uh, understand, but but fundamentally we understand. Things uh, now, by the way, we we are uh, in the I, I believe in the in the in the completely opposite uh, uh, situation. I think we we're, we're now it, it's pretty clear uh, that we don't understand uh, most of the things. For instance, dark matter, which is which is supposed to be um, the dominant matter uh, in in galaxies and in the universe, we don't understand what it is, um, and so on and so forth. But I think uh, uh, it, it was sort of this, this, this time in the 50s that almost everything uh, was uh, understood. And at that time, people started building um, particle accelerators. Um, and these are 
at that time uh, were basically the, 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 the most important tool of discovery. So people would collide particles at high energy, produce new particles and so on. And everything was great. Uh, 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 a nice particle, uh, a th theory of particles was developed, but there were some, some things that were not uh, really uh, understood. Uh, for instance, there was a bit of a mystery. There were two particles discovered um, and these particles um, uh, seem to uh, have the same exact mass, okay? But uh, they will have very, very different lifetime. And, uh, and that was uh, a, a bit puzzling. Um, and um, um, it was, um, uh, the, the, these two guys, um, uh, their, their names are, are uh, uh, Lee and Yang, um, T.D. Lee and C. and Yang. They um, um, uh, were extremely young at that time. I, I believe one of them was a postdoc, another one was just studying as an assistant uh, professor. Uh, they um, uh, said that, uh, you know, um, if uh, parity uh, uh, can be violated, then, uh, then we can explain uh, uh, the, the particles, then we can explain the mystery. Um, and, and, and of course they asked the question, uh, uh, parity violation, is it possible or is it a complete lunacy? And um, uh, then they started reading uh, uh, the literature and carefully analyzing uh, how do we, why, why do we have this notion that parity should be conserved? And they found something amazing. You know, there are the different types of interactions. There is strong interaction, um, the, the, there is weak interaction, there is electromagnetic interaction, there is gravitational interaction. And um, uh, what they found is that, um, um, there is strong evidence for uh, conservation of parity, uh, so that, that it's a good, uh, uh, good symmetry, in fact, uh, for strong interactions and electromagnetic interactions, but the weak interactions um, that are responsible for nuclear uh, decay. There's one particular type of interactions where there's actually no uh, evidence. And they proposed an experiment um, to, to check uh, for that. And uh, the, 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 they themselves were theorists. Um, and so they didn't do the experiment. And, and who did the experiment was uh, another Chinese American physicist. Uh, her name uh, uh, is C.S. Wu. Um, and uh, here's a cartoon showing uh, her experiment. She, she did the experiment as with um, she and her team. Uh, it was actually a teamwork as most science uh, is uh, uh, already since that, those times. She uh, polarized cobalt uh, nuclei and uh, these are unstable nuclei that can undergo uh, beta decay. Uh, and, uh, and she observed that um, if she uh, polarizes the spin in one direction um, uh, with, the, with the magnet here, uh, then the uh, electrons that are produced in this beta decay, they tend to go opposite to the spin. And, uh, and this was uh, um, uh, extremely, uh, 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 well, it was not puzzling because it was predicted by Lee and Yang, but this was an indication um, uh, of uh, uh, parity violation. And, and this cartoon actually shows that if you, if you look at the same experiment uh, in, the, in the mirror, um, um, then uh, uh, you, the, the, you see that um, uh, you, you kind of see the, the opposite situation that the, um, uh, the electrons uh, uh, should be going um, not opposite to the spin, but in the direction of the spin preferentially. And uh, now they, if parity is conserved, you shouldn't be able to say uh, whether you're looking uh, in the mirror or you're looking, um, or, uh, you're looking in the real uh, world. And here you can clearly see, and this, this uh, signifies parity violation. 
Okay, and um, uh, uh, so that was the, this amazing discovery. And a lot of people think it's not uh, actually uh, nice that these guys got the Nobel Prize and, and uh, 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 C.S. Wu they, uh, uh, did not get it. She was, by the way, a student uh, at Berkeley. Um, and uh, this experiment was done when she was working at the uh, National Bureau of Standards uh, in Gettysburg. Uh, you know, I, I like the cartoon in terms of physics, but I, I, I didn't uh, really like uh, that it didn't show her uh, her face uh, very nicely. That's how she looked when she was, I guess, a student, uh, or maybe uh, uh, soon after she was a student. Professor Rutger, yeah, I think there are some more people in the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so sorry. much. Uh, you know, no, no, I, I'm sorry. Yes, admit. And uh, admit, uh, you know, uh, you could could make me a co-host instead of host, and then uh, you can admit them yourself. But okay, doesn't Wait, matter. If you huh? if you make me host again, would you still be able to share your slides? Because then I could. No, I think I should make you a co-host. Uh, uh, that's what I usually do in Zoom. What? Okay, let me see. Um, by the way, um, I also lost the track of uh, of time. What is uh, what is um. It's 412. So, or, can, how, 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 in other words, uh, how long do you want me to talk? We scheduled it to five because you said you definitely, like, it's very late for you then, but whenever you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah or whenever you get tired. <laughs> Either way. Uh, yeah, okay. It's okay, very okay, late there. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit late, but we continue a bit. Uh, um, now I'm having a problem. Okay, so, so um, wait, wait a second. Um, you just disappeared. Um, oh, there you are. So more. And you don't have make, you just don't have this option. It's some other version of the, uh, okay, I'll be admitting people, doesn't matter. Um, okay, thank you, all right. sorry. What? I Sorry, said, I didn't hear you. That. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to say that we uh, that the, uh, we we do not study uh, Perry violation uh, in our group um, uh, using nuclei and nuclear decay. Uh, we use atomic uh, uh, transitions, and I'm going to 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 now tell you a bit about this, and also give you a bit of a, a historical perspective. It's, so th this is my a bit of my personal, um, uh, as you will see in a, uh, in a minute, uh, uh, relation to this um, uh, uh, story. So, so I mentioned that parity violation in nuclear beta decay was uh, uh, discovered in 1956. And in 1959, an amazing uh, physicist, I can, I can talk for hours about what this gentleman uh, has done. This is another genius. And actually, I, 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 I was very lucky to have met him uh, as a young man uh, personally. So his name was Yakov Zildovich. He actually says that uh, uh, if, if there is a, you know, if, uh, people did not really know what the mechanism for parity violation uh, was. And, and he said that there, if there is a particular. Yo. Uh, Again, what was that? Henry, I think you're unmuted. Okay. Um, uh, that if there's a, a particular type of parity violation, then you, you should be able to, to see a tiny uh, uh, effect uh, in atoms. But he, he did an estimate of that and he got that this is, uh, this is a bit too small uh, or a lot, to, uh, way too small to be observed. And so if, if in principle, uh, 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 this idea was right, but, but he, he, his conclusion was pessimistic. And so this idea uh, lay dormant for a few years, uh, for 15 years, um, until um, this amazing uh, uh, couple of uh, 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 people, uh, Marianne Bushia and her, she's an experimentalist and, and her husband was Claude Bouchia, who is a who is a who is a theorist, they they revisited this problem and they and they realized 
that um, uh, where Zildovich considered the simplest and the lightest atom hydrogen, if you go to heavy atoms, there is a, a, a very big enhancement of the fact. And that in fact, su such a big enhancement that it can be observed. And, and this uh, 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 sort of theoretical discovery by the Bush that, um, um, that induced people to, to go in the lab and start looking for it and several groups um, uh, got into this business and the first people uh, to see this were uh, uh, people in Novosibirsk, have some pictures. So the Novosibirsk uh, uh, team consisted of Professor Barkov and, and Zolotaryov and, and uh, then when I was a student in Novosibirsk, um, uh, uh, then I came uh, uh, to work in that lab with these guys. I was um, super lucky to, to, to learn from them. Um, and um, uh, then uh, uh, going back to this uh, history, so the, the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, 80s, oh, the second experiment, by the way, where uh, parity violation was observed, uh, was at Berkeley, um, and um, that experiment was led by Professor Eugene Commons, who, who later on uh, became my PhD thesis um, advisor. I'll show you uh, his picture. And uh, uh, one of the students working on this parity violation experiment was a, uh, then a young fellow by the name Steve Chu. So as maybe you know, Steve uh, uh, grew up uh, to, to earn a Nobel Prize in physics and become an energy secretary um, uh, for a few years. Uh, so, uh, and not to mention being the director of the Lawrence Berkeley lab uh, uh, as well. So he was one of the students uh, working on that. So, so then um, uh, uh, by the 90s, it became a field of precision measurement. People started uh, to measure uh, the effects with you know, one, 2% um, uh, relative uncertainty. And then uh, uh, there was a whole other jump um, in, the, in the experiments uh, led by uh, now another Nobel laureate, Carl Weinman um, at, uh, at Boulder in Colorado. But by the way, he got his Nobel Prize not for parity violation, but for something else. Um, but I, I said that it's going to be a bit of a personal history because I wanna show you in this timeline. Um, uh, so here I come as a um, uh, third year student uh, to work with these guys uh, in Novosibirsk and, 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 and my 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 um, my main aspiration, my my main dream at that time was to uh, one day be part of an experiment that actually sees um, parity violation. And and uh, 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 what this team did, they they observed parity violation, but then they thought that they need to do make a completely new experiment, much better. And, and there was the old experiment was uh, 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 disassembled. And, uh, and so I, I helped them work on a new experiment that was very, very far from seeing anything. Anyway, uh, I want to say that my um, dream eventually uh, uh, came true. Uh, already when I was uh, a professor at Berkeley uh, in 2009, we finally observed parity violation. Um, uh, and I was part of this and it took only 26 years uh, uh, to, to reach uh, my, my, my dream there. So anyway, um, I think I'm gonna skip um, some of the details here, uh, but I'm going to tell you a few uh, fun uh, things and a bit more uh, history. So um, in, uh, when I was a postdoc and I um, uh, already got my faculty appointment that summer, just before starting the faculty appointment at Berkeley, I spent uh, it with uh, working with Madame Bouchia um, uh, in, in Paris at the Col Normand. Uh, and this is Claude Bouchia. So these are in, in, uh, in, in a sense parents uh, of atomic parity violation. And uh, um, I must say that uh, uh, I'm super lucky to, 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 uh, to have continued collaborating with Madame Bouchia uh, until 
a couple of years ago. She's already retired and everything, but but um, uh, but uh, um, uh, we, we kind of revisited some of the topics in her uh, PhD thesis, and it has been a, a great pleasure uh, to 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 work with, uh, together with her. I, I want to 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 make a, a little pause here and and explain to you why uh, the French. Uh, uh, you, you see that there were, uh, if you looked at, uh, carefully at my table with the history, you, you saw some Russians there, some Americans, some, uh, some Oxford people, some British people, uh, and, and then there are the French. And, and, then, um, and then I would like to explain the, 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 the special role of the French um, in um, the business of parity violation. Let me see if I can... Uh, switch um, to, sorry, one second, I just need to switch uh, to another window. Um, well, let's, let's have a new presentation. Um, uh, do you see my screen still? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So you see, let's look at an atom. Um, let me see if I can do this uh, and not screw this up. Okay, so this is an atom. And now I'm going to uh, have a mirror and look at it in the mirror. This is a mirror. Uh, then if I look at this in the mirror, okay, then I see something like this. Right? So this is in, uh, in English, you write it like this. In Russian, actually, you, you, you uh, write it like this. And you look at the, the atom and its mirror reflection, it's about the same, right? So, so there is no apparent parity violation. But now you do the same in French. And I, I did screw it up. Uh, sorry, I did screw it up. I think I did screw it up. I screwed, uh, so, forgive me guys, I, I screwed up my, 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 my joke uh, completely because the mirror, ah, <laughs> sorry, that's terrible. That's terrible. I haven't practiced it for a long time. So the, the, the point is that the mirror uh, should be here. And, and, then, uh, and then you have the same thing, right? In the mirror, and, and, but E is pointing the, uh, in, in the opposite direction. And so the parity violation is now ap uh, uh, apparent. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. This is this is a terrible. I, one has to practice jokes uh, very carefully. Going back to uh, science here. Um, what I want to show you is um, yes. So 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 there are some some reasons why we uh, are trying to to measure it uh, in terbium atoms. And uh, in terbium atoms, we have um, uh, we have um, uh, a number uh, of isotopes. Do you know what isotopes are? Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is just uh, the same element, but a different number of of neutrons. And and this is of interest to us um, for the, uh, the study of, of parity violation because we want to compare. Um, uh, uh, the effect on different isotopes, and uh, um, we use uh, so these are the the, the uh, energy levels in atoms, and we use lasers. Um, and I'm going to skip this uh, uh, now, but I just want to show you to give you an idea of uh, what the apparatus is. Uh, so, so we uh, uh, first of all, uh, this is an atomic beam. Uh, experiment and this, the, all of these parts I'm going to show you are inside of the, uh, a, a metal container out of which all the air has been pumped. And there is an oven uh, in which we have uh, ytterbium. We heat it uh, to some 
uh, uh, temperature uh, uh, of uh, five to seven uh, hundred degrees, um, and um, and then uh, this uh, this box has a hole, and out of it come uh, uh, come comes a flux of the terbium atoms, and they we, we collimate it and forms a beam. And as the atoms fly uh, 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 through this interaction region, uh, we sub subject them to a beam um, of um, a very intense light at 408 uh, nanometers. Uh, it's uh, it's it's kind of uh, near already near ultraviolet. It's kind of bl uh, uh, bluish. And we have some uh, um, electrodes to apply electric field and magnetic field that, as it turns out, we need uh, to define what we call, we say is the handedness of the experiment. Is it right-handed uh, uh, combination or left-handed combination? Um, and um, then the atoms undergo uh, transitions between some uh, energy levels. Uh, and, and then we detect uh, um, uh, when well, again in this second detection region. So I, I don't expect you to um, understand the, uh, why we have these things exactly like we have them. Um, it'll take a, a long time to, to um, explain. I just want you to, to get a feel for what kind of uh, components we have. And um, yeah, these are the signals that we are seeing. Um, and um, uh, you know, when you do these experiments, um, they kind of, uh, you, you don't know um, uh, right away whether you, you have the effect or not, because these are still quite subtle effects. And, and so uh, in 2009, we started running and we get these points. You see the, these uh, things indicate the error bars, statistical error bars. And so, um, was, uh, so this was zero and this is non-zero uh, effect. And um, so at first it was not really obvious uh, what's going on, but you see these error bars here in around 14 to 20 are much smaller. We, we learned to do things better. So the error bars are smaller. And, and then in the end, um, we have very unambiguous detection of parity violation. So that was a very happy uh, uh, moment. And um, uh, then we uh, actually stopped doing this at Berkeley and uh, this experiment moved to, to Germany. And uh, currently, the, uh, this is about half a meter. This is a vacuum chamber that contains all of those components. And there is a, um, uh, uh, a, a laser uh, system there um, that provides light to these. Um, so the, the special thing about our experiment, and this is the first, uh, is that we, we were able to actually do measurements on, on different isotopes. Um, and uh, in fact, to um, uh, compare the isotopes, I'll show you the results. So um, uh, the, the effects are very small and uh, there is a lot of um, worry that you may be seeing some imperfections in your apparatus, some garbage, as we call it, uh, rather than the real uh, effect. And, and uh, how to deal with these systematics, I, I learned from my uh, uh, thesis uh, advisor, Professor Eugene Commons. And uh, actually, in, in, in Germany, I learned um, a very nice uh, uh, word uh, that I think is very appropriate. So your thesis advisor, uh, in Germany is called uh, Dr. Vater. Uh, so uh, Vater is father, yeah, Dr. Father. Um, so I think it's, it's, a, it's a very sweet uh, term. I like it very much, a, a very much appropriate in my case. So um, uh, this is actually uh, an amazing experiment looking for time reversal uh, violation, uh, actually not parity, but time reversal violation that Professor Commons built and operated with his student. And, um, uh, and the, the amazing thing about uh, this whole apparatus and uh, quite unusual uh, in nowadays is that most of it was built by himself. Uh, most parts were machined in the machine shop by himself. 
and the calculations un un underlying the design were done by him. So he, he was, uh, he would never assign an assignment that he didn't know uh, how to do uh, himself. It, it was amazing. Uh, person. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into this. And uh, here we have, uh, okay, I guess it's this one, I'll show you this one. Professor so, Butler, yeah? Um, um, how does the time reversal thing work? Or like the time, yeah, how does the machine work? Uh, the machine, it's also, uh, uh, it's also, um, uh, a, a, an atomic beam machine. Actually, this is uh, uh, this machine has a um, has a uh, 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 let me let me count. Uh, it has um, it has four atomic beams, two two of thallium and two of sodium going up, and 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 uh, and, and four going uh, uh, down. Two two beams of uh, thallium and two beams beams of, of uh, sodium. And, and um, I, I need to explain to you the principle of it. Maybe we'll get to that. Um, this is looking for something that's called um, electric dipole moment uh, of an electron. Uh, and uh, the, the electron has a, has a charge, but it shouldn't have a dipole moment. And if it has, it, 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 it immediately means violation uh, of time reversal for uh, reasons that I would need to explain you later if we, if we have time. But, uh, but my professor uh, 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 told me tons of uh, 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 things. And one of the things, it, uh, he told me a story about one guy um, who was working on, uh, uh, who was a physicist and, and he came to, to visit his father and his father asked the guy, uh, tell me, explain to me what 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 uh, what what, uh, what you are working on, and the guy said, "Oh, look, father, I'm 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 working on on time reversal," and the father said, "Hurry up, I'm getting old." So anyway, um, uh, th this doesn't look uh, uh, particularly uh, fancy, but this is a very important result. Uh, for us, so these are these different. Uh, um, oh, sorry, uh, no, not this one. Uh, so these are the uh, uh, different uh, isotopes um, uh, of a terbium, and this is the the the, the, uh, the, the parity violation uh, size. And the the theory predicts that the the effect should be proportional to the number of of neutrons, and we in fact confirm that. For the first time, directly experimentally, and uh, one, it's nice to confirm the standard model. Uh, but standard model has been already con confirmed in other experiments. Also interesting to uh, to do something new with this. And in fact, it turns out that uh, this experiment is uh, sensitive to uh, the existence of of uh, particles that are beyond the standard model, and we were able to put pretty stringent limits on some class of these particles, together with um, my uh, colleague and friend uh, Victor Flambaum, who is a professor at the University of so uh, New South Wales in Australia, and uh, we published this uh, in this fancy uh, journal uh, called Nature Physics, uh, and. Um, I show you some of the uh, players in this in this game. So uh, uh, this is Jason Stalnacker, um, who was um, uh, another under, first undergraduate student, then a graduate student uh, 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 at Berkeley uh, in our group, um, and uh, he's now uh, a professor and chair at the Oberlin College, physics uh, professor at Oberlin College. And for this experiment, he came uh, for one summer for sabbatical and participated in the measurements. And when Jason um, uh, graduated uh, and left, um, the next postdoc on the experiment was Konstantin Tsugutkin, this fellow. Uh, so we also, uh, uh, he, he's now working in industry, but we also uh, uh, kind of got him to, to come and participate a bit and also he participated in some data analysis 
remotely. This is uh, one of my current PhD students, Anne Fabricant. She uh, actually, after this experiment, uh, decided to do something completely uh, different. She's doing biophysics still in our group. And this is uh, uh, Dionysius Antipas. Um, uh, yeah, he's a postdoc who led this experiment. Um, let me skip that, skip that. Jan Zildovic, uh, the same uh, guy uh, who thought of atomic parity violation. And um, let me just say uh, that um, uh, atomic parity violation is now um, an exciting and established field of science. But um, even though um, it has been a challenge for, well, um, uh, 60 and 20, no, 40 and, and uh, another 24, for like for 60 years, maybe. Uh, uh, parity violation is also uh, predicted to exist in, in molecules, but nobody has ever seen it yet. And people are uh, looking quite actively uh, uh, for, for the effects of parity violation. So one of the effects is um, uh, that if you now take what's called chiral molecules, chiral, I think kairos means a hand in, in Greek language. Maybe somebody knows Greek uh, and can tell us, or ancient Greek, I guess. Um, uh, so, so you can have uh, basically the same chemical formula, but one uh, combination uh, is left-handed. That's why you have uh, the hands drawn here and another one right-handed. And, and the theory predicts that these guys should be slightly different because of this uh, uh, parity violation effect. Um, and uh, anyway, we have, uh, we have come up with a, with a very promising uh, technique uh, based on nuclear magnetic resonance to look for it. And um, so uh, this is now an ongoing experiment. I'm ex very excited about it. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think um, I think that maybe we should uh, stop uh, here. And I hope I I I, I gave you a, a bit of a of a glimpse um, of of this uh, fundamental tabletop uh, physics as, uh, and uh, uh, one of my uh, senior, my shoulder. Uh, friends and colleagues and, and one a wonderful um, uh, 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 person and uh, uh, one of the workers in this field uh, in the past, uh, Professor Derek Stacy. I, uh, uh, I remember him him giving a talk on parity violation and and his talks. You know your jaw drops how how, how great the, the, these talks uh, are, how well prepared they are, and 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 uh, one of his talks he ended up. Saying I, I don't know how the mental these experiments are, but they're certainly fun. So I'm going to end in the same place. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us. It was really interesting. Yes, incredible. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions? Everybody's just sleep. No question. <laughs> um, professor, I had a question. So um, as you mentioned a lot of the times when talking about parity and parity violations, like terms like symmetry and um, asymmetry, and I kind of came across this in these interesting terms like before when I was like reading about field forces and whatnot. So, um, I also came across this term that I didn't know the meaning of like super symmetry or in super asymmetry. And I think they were in the context of something like string theory. So yeah. I was wondering if you could like shed some light on that. Yes. Um, 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 yes, 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 yes. Um, a bit, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit in a, in another, uh, uh, area. Um, so, um, so, 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 um, uh, different particles 
can be uh, grouped um, in uh, there's, there's a, a whole um, uh, sort of group group theory uh, associated with particle physics and uh, and and uh, uh, oftentimes uh, you 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 find that some, some particles are naturally grouped for instance a proton uh, and a, and a neutron is like a, a like a like a doublet right two two particles uh, and they have different properties but uh, but you can kind of understand um, you can kind of understand um, these properties um, uh, if you understand the underlying uh, what 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 sort of uh, lies beneath. So in the, in the case of proton and neutron, it's easy to explain because uh, they're uh, made up of quarks. Uh, uh, you know, it's up, up, and down, and down, down, and up. And and uh, if your quarks were kind of symmetric, if they had the uh, um, um, uh, all the same properties, then you would have uh, the same properties for a proton. Of, and 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 the neutron and you know um, uh, from the point of view of uh, strong interactions, uh, for example, they are uh, indeed uh, quite quite similar to each other. And then you can start generalizing uh, uh, these things um, uh, and and go to uh, sort so of my, my much uh, 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 higher level. And uh, now we we see that, uh, for instance. Uh, we, we have some particles that are um, so-called fermions and some are, are bosons, depending on the value of their, their spin. So there is a, there's a uh, theoretical um, construct. Um, uh, that I think uh, supersymmetry uh, uh, does not necessarily uh, relate to, 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 to string theory. It's just, uh, uh, I think, um, uh, one of the theories that, pre that predict partners to each of the particle, uh, there should be a partner. Um, so for instance, for uh, a, a, an electron, there should be um, uh, a particle that's called selectron, supersymmetric electron. Um, I, th I think uh, uh, people were really hoping to, to, to get the evidence for supersymmetry from, from uh, the Large Hadron Collider, for example. Um, and they didn't find it, so 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 there's very little evidence uh, for for this currently. But that 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 comes from the uh, attempt to to like unify all the all the particles um, in, in into some 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 kind of a model like that. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting to know about. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, I have a question. Um, does your work connect to the antimatter uh, matter asymmetry in any way? And yeah, does... yeah. So we um, uh, uh, we we uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, are very interested uh, in um, antimatter, and we we we're, we're trying to do. Um, uh, uh, things with it. So, so um, my um, collaborators, uh, for example, they are in the business of um, uh, trapping uh, antimatter particles. Uh, uh, so, Professor Woodley told you about the alpha uh, experiment, but there are there are actually several different uh, experiments, uh, and uh, not all of them are interested in in studying antihydrogen. Uh, that was the Topic of Professor Wurtilis' uh, 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 talk. Um, uh, so there is a, a base uh, a collaboration. I forgot um, uh, it, it, what it uh, what it stands for. Um, baryon asymmetry probably. Um, uh, and what they are trying to do is they are trying to compare the fundamental properties of uh, of a proton and antiproton. And uh, at, at CERN in, um, uh, in uh, near G Geneva, they, um, they, they, they produce these antiprotons and that they can trap them and they can uh, uh, get them so cold that they can put them in, a, in, uh, in basically in a, in, in a device where one antiproton can live for, for months. Um, 
And uh, so, uh, so uh, a few years ago, we, we collaborated with uh, the base experiment uh, in uh, trying to see if we can use uh, the data from these uh, trapped antiprotons to uh, find some uh, traces of uh, dark matter interaction with the antimatter. And uh, this was uh, quite unusual because it's one of the first, if not the first experiment that um, was looking for um, possible uh, uh, difference in the interactions, possible strong interaction, uh, 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 strong not in a, in, a, in the sense of strong force, but uh, but sizable interaction of the dark matter with antimatter, and uh, that would be very interesting. Um, um, and um, uh, uh, we also uh, uh, now trying to uh, build some devices uh, in our lab that eventually we would like to, uh, to collect uh, uh, elements of antimatter, um, for example, um, anti-protons um, uh, and, um, uh, and positrons, which are anti-electrons and, and, and start making anti-hydrogen um, uh, right inside our trap and, and make this trap uh, basically a very small uh, device. So that's one of the uh, projects that we, we have. Um, yeah, so we, it's a very interesting topic of research. Cool, thank you. It's currently antimatter is a tough business because uh, if you want antiprotons, then uh, there are very few places uh, in the world where you can get them. And if you want cold antiprotons, then uh, at this time, CERN is the only place where you can uh, get them really, yeah. But, you know, CERN is uh, um, only in Switzerland, you can, <laughs> you can go there. Uh, one thing I want to say, people are now building um, uh, the, these uh, devices to to carry uh, to carry um, antimatter around, so you can have like a, a, a suitcase loaded with, with antimatter and then take it wherever you want. So um, so maybe instead of going to CERN, you can ask your friend to bring uh, some antimatter in 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 a, in a suitcase. You know, so that would be cool. Yeah, and, but that that is almost a reality. You know. That would be pretty cool. Um, I have a question. I don't know if you can answer it in 15 minutes, but um, what are the different types of parity? Well, parity uh, um, normally is, um, is just spatial inversion, but sometimes people um, uh, say C parity or something, and uh, uh, that's... Uh, um, uh, relates to the charge conjugation and sometimes this is generalized this concept is is generalized um, to, to some other kind of operations but but uh, but strictly speaking parity is just about spatial inversion or or maybe you wanted to ask something else maybe I misunderstood the question. I remember reading about like R parity at some point. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, um, I don't know if I if, if I can uh, currently say um, much. Uh, much of an, uh, 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 yeah, but these, these are uh, uh, usually some uh, um, sy symmetries that are again uh, uh, associated with, with some kind of tra transformations. Uh, and um, uh, there are, you know, there's, uh, um, yeah. I, anyway, maybe I uh, maybe I uh, it's too late for me to to um, to reconstruct 
uh, this for you at, <laughs> at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, Professor Butker, are you feeling tired? Are you ready no. to go? No, I'm not uh, uh, tired. <laughs> so I'm happy to answer more questions. Um, I saw this on one of your slides, but could you elaborate on what weak neutral current is? Uh, yes, that I can. Um, so let me share my screen again. And uh, I will explain that. Um, Yeah. So um, in uh, uh, this what's called standard model, there are these particles that are uh, called W plus minus uh, and 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 Z. Uh, and Z is. Uh, uh, um, neutral. And uh, so in uh, particle physics, uh, the uh, in interactions, <clears throat> um, uh, the uh, interactions are mediated by, uh, um, by, by, by particles. And, uh, and for instance, um, you know, um, if I have, um, so I said, let, so, so for instance, like we can draw the, the way things are drawn um, uh, is, is, is like this. So let's think about uh, uh, the uh, neutron. Um, yeah, and um, 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 then you would have, these are the quarks in, inside the neutron. And then uh, here you would have this one. Um, um, yeah, I didn't realize it's, 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 really, <laughs> it's really getting late. Um, so um, uh, uh, I, I just want to say uh, that uh, uh, so, so, you, so 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 the uh, when you have an exchange uh, of uh, W, um, then um, um, uh, the, because these things are, are, are charged, the, the, the particles uh, that uh, that have these. Uh, um, um, uh, the, 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 the charge is changing, but when you when you uh, have this z z not exchange, then you have, uh, for instance, the um, the the neutron uh, uh, in in um, in the atom, and then you have an electron, and uh, this is the the carrier of the uh, weak interaction, and and there is this uh, uh, z not okay. And um, uh, this is called a, this is called a neutral current because you you start with electron uh, and you have the neutron in the atom and nothing changes. There is no uh, uh, beta decay particles do, do not change and and and, and people uh, did not realize um, uh, uh, yeah uh, that um, um, uh, th this is possible before the, the before the, the standard model. Uh, was invented, and this is called the the neutral current interaction. This is what you have in atoms. Um, uh, 
yeah, and here, instead of drawing quarks, we can just draw um, maybe that, that uh, uh, level indeed. So, so if I have a, uh, if I have a, a, a neutron, um, then, uh, then this, uh, so uh, when it, when it uh, decays that we have a proton, um, we, we, have, uh, we have an electron, um, and we have an anti-neutrino. Uh, it's thrown as a new bar. Uh, and but sorry, I need another line. So, so you can say that what happens here, I'll draw it another way, is that uh, uh, you have this neutron going and then, uh, then uh, it, it oh, the different color. And then it decays uh, into this uh, um, uh, let's say a proton and and then w minus and this w minus then itself uh, decays into an electron uh, and neutri and anti neutrino like this okay so um, I can also draw it with uh, with quarks, and then I see uh, because this uh, that was was trying to to draw in the beginning. So this is uh, uh, DDU, right, and and this is UUD. So you have two of these guys uh, uh, that don't change. These are called incidentally spectator quarks. And 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 here, so instead of proton and neutron, it's just uh, we can say that D decays into U and W minus, right? You see this? Uh, so here the particles change. So so here uh, for neutron goes into proton. So so these are charge currents, and and these are called the neutral currents. And the and uh, uh, the existence of neutral currents uh, was. Um, uh, predicted by, um, well, it maybe was discussed even before, but this is, uh, this is what comes naturally, this, this kind of a structure for these uh, intermediate particles that comes from the model uh, that's now called the standard model. And uh, in the early days, uh, it was called the Weinberg, Salam model. These guys got the Nobel Prize uh, for it. Uh, Steven Weinberg, wonderful, wonderful person. I think he was at, at Berkeley um, for, for a little bit as an assistant professor. Didn't get tenure, by the way, at Berkeley. Um, and uh, went uh, uh, to eventually to different places and eventually was a professor at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, and uh, Salam was, a, 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 a Abdul Salam, where was he from? I think he was from Pakistan, if I remember correctly. And um, he founded um, uh, a center of theoretical, international center theoretical uh, uh, physics um, in uh, Italy. And this is a wonderful place uh, of international cooperation. So these are interesting people. Um, yeah. And uh, the neutral currents come from their model. I don't know, sorry for my mumbling, but I think I answered this um, uh, as, as much as I could um, currently. That was Thank you. Thank you so much. That was yeah. incredible. And I think we are also wrapping up on five and it's getting very late over there. So yeah, just thank you so, so much for coming. And we know it's very late for you over there, but- yeah, it's 2 a.m. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. I really enjoyed this lecture and um, hopefully we can be in touch. Yes.